Um, a lot of us are used to service in a little bit of different way. We're used to store-bought cookies. We are used to church as usual. You're not supposed to serve unless you're completely right. Your life is all together. But we're used to store-bought cookies the way mama taught us how to do it. We're used to either you're going to serve out of the pulpit, or you're going to be an usher, or you're going to sit down and hush your mouth. You don't get to serve in the kingdom of God unless you are prim, proper, and all together. And you are truly, truly called. But we're here to dispel that. We're no longer going to eat store-bought cookies. We got some fresh baked cookies out the oven for you guys today. Okay? Amen. So how many of you here, we have a ministry fair set up. And for what, um, those of you in here that really don't know what that is, here at Kingdom Agenda, we believe that everyone deserves and should serve in the kingdom of God. Should serve in the house of God. And service isn't always from here. It's not always just an usher. It's outside of these four walls. It's more than just what you see in the sanctuary. We have the Kingdom Cafe, guest services. We break ministry down that you get to serve in your passion area. Those things that you truly are concerned about. We're not going to throw you in an area where you don't have any passion for it. You don't love it. You don't even like it. You're just doing it because that's what somebody told you to do. Fresh baked cookies today. Alright. Alright, I pose a question for you guys today. Who in here says that they have a gift or a talent on the inside of them? A gift or a talent? Something that only you are really good at? Either it's singing, dancing, public speaking. People are attracted to you for no reason at all. I mean, there's no reason. You, you can sell sand in a desert. That's a gift. Everybody can't do that. Somebody like Pastor Lynn, who's everybody's friend. That's a gift. You can't get along with everybody. It's a gift or a talent that God is putting you and God expects for us to use it in his house for his glory. Amen? And I pose another question. What are you doing with that gift? I see some people in here that I know you a little bit. And you got some gifts and talents in you that I know you're not using. I know you're not doing nothing with it because I know what you can do. And you're not using it. You're not using it in here. You might be using it in the world. But you're not using it for the house of God. Amen. I found a pretty interesting statistic. It says that 80% of the world's economy is based on the service industry. Goods and services. And a lot of us spend our time trying to figure out, how am I going to get you some money? How am I going to make my life better? How am I do this and do that? So we try and tap into the gifts and talents that God has put in us so we can use it for the world and get what we need. But it says in God's word, let me see what the scripture is so I won't be a liar to you. <laughs> I believe it's Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, I don't think I have it up here. Oh, here it is. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all those things that you see in the world, he will give it to you. He's already placed everything in you, but guess what? He put it in there for him. For his work. For his service in the earth. And he's going to let you use it in the world, but if you seek him first, then it'll spill over. And you won't want for nothing. You won't have to look for it. But the service begins first here in the house of God. Amen. Um, first Peter, chapter four, verse ten. Now everybody just about in here said that they have a gift of talent. How many of you know that a gift of talent is not for you? It says in First Peter, verse four, verse ten, as each of you, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version, as each of you has received a gift a particular spiritual talent 
a gracious divine endowment, meaning that you didn't deserve it or earn it, God just gave it to you. All right now. Employ it for one another as defense. Good trustees of God, many-sided grace, faithful stewards of extremely diverse powers and gifts granted to Christians by unmerited faith. Your gift is not for you. I'm going to pick on somebody in here. I'm not going to call them no names because they're really shy. But my past birthday, I wasn't really, I don't really celebrate my birthday. If I get gifts, it's okay. It's okay. If I don't, it's okay. So I slept in on my birthday. Mm -hmm. Nine, ten o'clock. I stay up late, so don't judge me. Um, and I got a phone call, but I didn't answer the phone. I, I checked my messages a few minutes later, and I heard a birthday wish. And that birthday wish was from a very close friend, and she sung me happy birthday. It woke me up out of my sleep. I sat up in the bed and said, oh my goodness, her voice is beautiful, but she's shy. She wants to keep her gift. She wants to use it, don't get me wrong, but her gift isn't for her. It's for everyone. It could, it made my birthday just that much better. I mean, it really made me get up and say, well, it is my birthday. Because of the gift in her, she sparked something in me. Your gift is not for you, it's for people around you, and it's not necessarily something in the church. We want you to serve here, don't get me wrong. We want you to plug in, and we want you to work hard. We want you to. But we don't want to guilt you into it. We want you to know that God put something in you for him, and he wants you to use it, and we want you to, too. It's not grammatically correct, but okay. <laughs> and there are promises, blessings that come along with that gift. Yeah. It says in Malachi 3, chapter um, verses 14 through 18, we'll read that. Because a lot of times in the world, we, we do use our gifts for the world, and we want to, we, we get kind of aggravated that people in the world are, they're talented, they're singers, they're dancers, and they're getting money. They're getting it however they can get it. And they're getting a lot of it, and they're blessed. And you like, serving God, man, this is boring. I ain't getting nothing out of this. Shoot, I might as well go on the world and do what I want to do because they get it. They know how to do it. But let me see, there are benefits to that. You can do the same thing in the church that you can do for in the world for God and still get it and still make money and still do what God has called you to do. But we're going to read verses 14 through 18 and we'll see the benefits and the promise, promises of a servant of God. It says, ye said, it is vain to serve God. What profit is it is that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they are that they tempt God are even delivered. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord. And they that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make my jewels, I will spare, uh -oh, see, spare them, just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. And when, and you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. If you serve God. God comes back for you. He's coming back for the wicked. I don't care how good they had it while they was here. At the end of the day, God ain't coming back for them. Yeah. Your reward is greater on the other side. Yeah. And it can be great here if you choose to listen to God while he speaks in this earth now. Yeah. So we setting you up to serve on a purpose today. Yeah. We have ministry moves all around you. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be willing to plug into your gifts on. And it doesn't mean that you have to serve in one area. I want to sing, but ain't nobody trying to replace me in the booth. I want to get in the choir, but can somebody come push them buttons back there? I need your help. 
<laughs> yes, ma'am, you too, Miss Bianca. <laughs> and another thing, your age don't matter. If you're 60, you can start today if you ain't been doing that from here to 60. You can start working today until the day you leave here. Yeah. And if you're 13, I don't think on Ariane right now. Doing praise and worship. She's 13. She's sung up here like a grown person. She's utilizing the gift that God put in her. And she's doing it at the age of 13. She's not concerned about that. It's a gift. She's not operating out of her own self. She's operating out of the gift and talent that she's cultivated. Yes. And since Nara pointing at himself, we're going to point him out. <laughs> He's young too, 12, 13 years old. He's up here utilizing his gift on those drums. Yes. It's not up to you. It really isn't. You can make a decision. Our decisions dictate where we live. It dictates where we're going to remain in life. Yes. It dictates whether or not we're going to be successful or yes. not. Yes. So you got a decision to make whether or not you're going to do what God asks you to do or not. It's your life. Yes. And you, I know you decide how you live it. Yes. So we're going to move on with the ministry prayer. We're going to bring people up and they're going to tell you about the gifts and talents, the um, different ministries that you can plug into here. They're going to sell their area. And they're going to want, you're going to want to plug in. But don't plug in just because it sounds good. Plug in because that's where you have a passion to serve. Because that's the only place that you're going to really give it your all. And that's what we want from you here. So we're going to move on. And we're going to hand it over to Ms. Trisha and Morissette. Oh, Pastor Z. Real quickly. 